Greetings. Teresa here, your uh, friendly fitness instructor from Southgate Center. As most of you who know me know that I love to walk. That's one of my favorite things to do. And although I have addressed walking in an earlier video, I felt that it was time to address some safety issues. So if possible, before you leave home, let the person you live with or someone you know the general route you are going. I'm not always good at doing that because I don't always know where I'm going. I may be just walking and let my feet follow. Oh, there's a, a corner I want to turn down because I see something down the street. But I don't always recommend doing that. It's up to you. It depends on your comfort level. Within the city of Woodstock, I'm quite comfortable walking most areas. Uh, I wouldn't walk down a dark alley. That's not safe to do, depending on the time of day. But if you can, let someone know where you're going. It's important to stay hydrated in this extreme heat. Um, it doesn't take long to become dehydrated, and this, the effects of dehydration are not pleasant and can be quite dangerous. So always remember to stay hydrated. So in saying that, choose the an appropriate time of day for the season. Early morning or late in the evening in the heat and midday and before dinner in colder weather. Gauging what the weather will allow you to do. Doesn't make sense to go out at noon for a big brisk walk when you're going to certainly become a little puddle on the sidewalk very quickly. I'd like to recommend you carry a small backpack or purse or fanny pack. If you're men, you find something you can carry things in. So a, a small backpack would look would be good for you. And you can have it packed just for walking. That's what I have. I have a very small backpack and in it I carry ID so that if something happens, someone knows my name and they know how to get in touch with my husband. I carry my cell phone at all times in case I have a problem and need to call for help. A very small amount of money. I wouldn't carry credit cards or anything that has any value that could be stolen. Again, not because we hopefully we would never have to worry about this, but things happen and we need to be prepared. Of course, the keys to the house, bug spray, sunscreen, lip balm, a small bottle of water, and I also have a, a whistle that I always carry in case for some reason your voice isn't strong enough. Blowing that whistle will get someone's attention. And if the un most unthinkable thing happens and somebody attacks you, Blowing that whistle on their ear is a huge deterrent if we can keep our presence of mind to do that. And in those situations, it's not always easy to do. If you wear earbuds, be mindful of the volume that you're listening, because if you have your volume too high, it also means you can't hear someone coming up behind us or you. And even if their intent is only to pass, it can be pretty scary to have someone right beside you all of a sudden you didn't hear them coming. And even though I don't wear earbuds, that has happened to me. The person is light on their foot and all of a sudden they're saying passing you. And that's a good practice to have as well. When you're passing by someone, let them know, give them plenty of notice when you're going past them. I'm passing on your left or I'm passing on, on your right so that the person knows that you're there. Be aware of your surroundings. It's so important to know what's going on around you, watching for cars, watching for dogs, watching for other people. Just be aware. And, and it's quite nice to be able to, as you're looking around that you, the gardens that you see and how well kept people's properties are, it's quite nice. And that's part of the journey when you're walking is to take a look around, not to be so focused inward that we don't take in the beauty of gardens and trees and and the water and the birds and all those wonderful things that comes from being in nature. 
dogs can be a real concern. Most are friendly. And I try to give most dog walkers a wide berth so that their dog doesn't see us as a threat or me as a threat. I love dogs. I would pet every single one, but not all of them are friendly and not their owners are not always happy with somebody just reaching out and petting their dog. They're trying to train them in a certain way. And with COVID, getting that close to someone is not necessarily the safest thing to do. I had an acquaintance who was attacked by a dog. So this is something that I try not to think about, but if a dog attacks you, it is important to report it to the authorities. If the animal has drawn blood, go to the emergency room, get the wound checked out, get it cleaned. It may be small, but it's really important if it's a small wound to get it cleaned properly and stitched if needed. The hospital, we will report it to the Board of Health and the dog and its owner will be investigated. And it's really important to know if the dog has had all its shots. If you can't find the dog, you can't find the owner, it means that you will have to go through the rabies, the series of rabies shots. And I've never had to do that, but I have heard that it is very, very unpleasant to go through that. So all that being said, 99% of the time we're safe. There's no worries. We can enjoy the fresh air, the sunshine, the birds, and the insects if you're in the woods. That's always a treat when you have to dodge the mosquitoes and any other little creatures, but that's part of being in nature. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Have an absolutely enjoyable walk. Stay safe. And until next time, bye for now. Thank you.